Welcome you all to the lecture video session on project implementation phase, networking techniques and how to evaluate a project to understand the benefits or the challenges that it can have. There are certain networking techniques uh, which have been developed for the project implementation which are very very popular one and which gives an understanding about the project that how the project could uh, you know uh, do uh, whether it is going to do well in the you know coming days or uh, within the stipulated time or not some of the networking techniques are pert cpm jert that is jert is nothing but graphical evaluation and review technique wrsp that is workshop analysis scheduling program lob is a line of balance out of all these five uh, five networking techniques Two of the networking techniques are very very popular. They are PERT and CPM. PERT is nothing but program evaluation and review technique and CPM is nothing but the critical path method. There are certain uh, stages uh, for the timely implementation phase of the manufacturing facility. When we see two types of different types of project, one as the project uh, which is concerned with the manufacturing and the other project which is service oriented, there are different steps that have to be uh, done uh, in order to implement the time and to avoid the overrun of the time. So the first step that is included, that is the, that is the most important step while implementing uh, the time uh, phase in the project implementation stage of a manufacturing facility is the first one is project and engineering design. Second one is the negotiation and contracting. Third one is the construction. Fourth one is the training. And the fifth one is the plant and commissioning. These are the five different stages uh, which, is, uh, which gives the timely implementation uh, in the five different uh, stages of manufacturing facilities. For the experience of the implementation of the project, uh, we need to understand what could be the reasonable cost and we need to understand that what cost at what cost the break-even analysis would, would go with the projected break-even analysis time. So with this, the, uh, there are three different types of methods where we can calculate the, uh, the cost uh, in a reasonable cost uh, at which the project can be implemented. The first one is uh, adequate formulation of the projects. Second one is the use of principle of responsibility accounting. And the third one is the use of network techniques. We are going to see that what is the importance of network techniques and then we will understand the network different network techniques in detail and we will be able to understand why the implementation schedule has to be found by every entrepreneur. When we understand the implementation schedule, we need to understand a little about the project implementation phase. When we do the evaluation, when we do the feasibility study, after doing the feasibility study, we will do the analysis and then we will see whether the project is going to be the potential project out of all the projects that are available. The next stage is going to be the project implementation phase. During the project implementation phase, every entrepreneur has to prepare a timetable and this timetable has to have the tasks and that has to be done in the months and what are the different types of tasks that goes on the priority so the network after the network which has been prepared the project authorities are now they will be ready uh, to uh, to find out that what is going to be the first task or the main task during the implementation of the project so to uh, to have the successful implementation of a project that depends on how well the entrepreneur prepares the network of the project and how well the network has been designed so during the course of the implementation there are several factors there are many factors which arise which cannot be uh, understood or which cannot be anticipated it could be due to any emergency that may uh, get into the project schedule and may overrun or may alter the time schedule that is already planned so initial network may get deviated and these variants have to be recorded so as to understand the cost that has that has incurred extra cost that has incurred due to the variance in the project time schedule so uh, the number of network techniques which uh, which i uh, mentioned in the earlier slide like per jert or uh, which could uh, which could be the lob or which could be uh, the uh, wrsp out of all these two methods are very very popular they are pert and cpm so before understanding the pert and the cpm in length we need to understand that why the implementation schedule has to be prepared by the 
So the timely imp implementation of the project is very very important in order to avoid the over cost or the overrun of the time and the cost that is associated with it. Normally in India the delay in the project implementation it has become a common feature but if we develop a, a PERT chart or the GAN chart it would be uh, it would enable the engineer or it would enable the project manager to understand the time that is involved in each task and where exactly the delays are happening and it will be possible to plug the time delay. So the implementation phase of an industrial uh, project is going to involve uh, the setting up of the manufacturing facilities and then it consists of several stages. The first stage of the in the implementation of the project is going to be the project and the engineering design and the second stage is going to be the negotiating and contracting. Third one is the construction and the fourth one is the training and then the fifth one is the plant and commissioning. Translating the uh, investment proposal into a concrete project is a task. It is going to be a very very complex uh, and it is a time consuming and the risky task. So the delays in the implementation would definitely in, uh, add the cost to it which is going to lessen or which is going to reduce the profit that is anticipated. So in order to do that we, we already addressed that there are three different types of techniques. One is the adequate formulation and the other one is the use of principle. So let us understand the implementation table that is to be drawn by every entrepreneur. The first task uh, for the, uh, in the first month is the formulation of the project report. After this is done application for the term loan, term loan at the, in this stage term loan and the working capital may get sanctioned under the single window scheme if the entrepreneur approaches any of the state financial body and that can be uh, the application has to be given for the finance that is projected for the term loan. Term loan always covers the infrastructure and uh, so it will be possible for the entrepreneur to get the machineries and the infrastructure that is involved in it. After the term loan application is done, the third stage will be the sanctioning of the term loan depending on the various uh, the statutory terms and where exactly the entrepreneur goes for the financial assistance. And after this, the possession of the land. If the entrepreneur is going to apply for the KEA DBA, then they are going to give the land or the uh, entrepreneur may go for the building itself. Next, if the land is uh, in a if the land application is given after getting the land, then the building has to be constructed, which is going to be the fifth uh, most important activity or the task. After getting the building, it is not sufficient to have only the building or uh, the shell. So we need to have the power and water in order to have a manufacturing facility. So even that will be uh, that will become the sixth phase or the sixth task. After getting the infrastructure like building, power and water. Then the order for the machinery will be placed looking at the uh, various credentials of the supplier and the suitability of the plant and machinery which is required to carry out the task. So after this, after the machineries are uh, received, once the machineries are ready, then the installation of the machinery would happen after the machinery, parallelly probably uh, the manpower uh, recruitment process will start. And once the recruitment is finalized, the manpower recruitment uh, is finalized uh, depending on the number of people that they are involved or it is required in order to carry the uh, activity. Then the rec after the recruitment is happened, then the trial production would start. This is going to be the implementation phase that every entrepreneur has to prepare. And there are two different types of uh, aspects to the project management. It is not only important for a company to establish a new facility, but it also should have two different, uh, you know, two different aspects have to be considered by the project management uh, team. So they are, one is the human phase and then the human aspect of the project management and the second one is the administrative aspect of the project management. What is this human aspects? Uh, any successful uh, project will see a satisfaction from the, in terms of human relationships because when uh, Hawthorne experiments have been done, uh, the, then it, uh, you know, it reflected that the majority of the task that is done by the human being comes out of the belongingness that is uh, towards the task or towards the, uh, in, uh, towards the facility they, where they are working. So if there is a belongingness, then obviously that satisfaction that is achieved by the human being would be more than what the salary that they draw or what the environment that is provided by the factory. The belongingness to the task, to belongingness to the work is going to be, to be uh, successful, uh, you know, that, that will turn it, uh, turn the task. 
So, for the successful implementation of the product project, a satisfactory human relationship between the top management, middle management, and the lower management is a must. To work in a team, there should be a chemistry which is going to make the success to come uh, with the hard work that is uh, in, that is done by the team. So, to achieve this, uh, we, you know, human relationship in a in the project setting. The project manager has to work out with the team and they have to the project manager has to understand the limitations of each and every human being who is involved in that particular task with the team and they have to handle uh, the project manager has to handle the problems in and challenges in a very uh, successful manner so to do this the project manager has to have four different type of uh, qualities that is that these challenges are related to authority orientation motivation and the group functioning what is this authority authority uh, all these you know like all these four factors are the human aspects of the project management so when we think about the authority uh, in project management the project manager uh, whose activities uh, are cut across the functional lines of the command it takes a desired uh, local authority that there, there will be the authority that is in place which is going to give the order and which is also going to give a work relationship with the subordinates in the team so when the uh, project manager is in the formal control uh, that that emanates from the contracts and then the agreement uh, if the outside agencies are involved in it so when the outside agencies are involved in it the project manager has to control the activity with respect to the quality and the execution purposes so there he exerts the formal command which is going to which which may not be uh, relished by everyone but there will be different agencies who are involved in it so that all agencies should work on the common understanding so that the work would not suffer any kind of delays so the project manager's authority would be differently uh, would be definitely critical and his ability is uh, going to be tested uh, in uh, in developing the report uh, in developing a rapport among all the agencies and then the project personnel his skill is going to come into picture and also the professional reputation of the project manager is going to be based on the way that he handles the uh, all the agencies on the same platform so it also you know the, it is greatly connected to the communication and also the passion to the work so once this authority exercise is completely uh, taken uh, care by the project manager then the second one is going to be the orientation uh, that is going to come into the picture so here uh, the most of the managers who works on the project are going to be engineers or at least the technologists who are going to work uh, the when the engineer assumes the responsibility of a manager he or she the person is going to face some kind of difficulties uh, in handling the team because uh, there uh, some people may not relish the way that the project manager uh, handles the problem because it is it's going to be really hard to convince every one of the team member but it is the ability of the project manager to perform the task of planning designing organizing directing and also controlling the resources in a firm or in the team in the world of uncertainty because everything is uncertain so uh, the project right from the beginning it is going to go on the anticipation so as long as it uh, projects further as long as it gets developed further it is going to be the uncertainty under the uncertainty it is the ability of the project manager which comes into picture in order to have the orientation to develop the project to the fullest scale so the project manager it has to be creative they have to have the vision and the project manager is going to have the creative approach towards uh, to solve any kind of non programmed activities there there could be sudden activity that is going to come in between but the project manager has to have the ability to handle it amidst all the planned activities so the manager has to achieve the task or achieve the you know complete success of the task on the only when he takes everybody together and it becomes a complete team management which is going to give the result so next one is the task of the top, you know manager is to motivate every one of the team in the uh, all the time whether it is going to be the lower level or the mid level the project manager has to motivate everyone and takes them towards the common goal or the objective so that everybody would work without any kind of delays and it also goes the, it, the motivation largely goes with the people 
perception and also uh, the ability to understand and appreciate the people uh, work and also to correct them at the time of need and to give a helping hand to, at the time of understanding and developing them so the fourth one and the last one is the group functioning uh, for building an effective group of, of the com uh, the effective group uh, the company must uh, you know have the genuine participation of every level of people and if the, there should be a participative style of management so that everybody would uh, would understand that the task is their task of their own uh, you know like the responsibility and also they will participate in developing and building and they will all work with a common objective so the with the managerial philosophy in place the project manager can facilitate the development of the mutual trust and then the relationship which is going to yield and which is going to take the project towards a success so in this task the project manager ultimately has to have all kinds of leadership capabilities sensitivity to understand the human nature and also the perceptions and also the concern for the welfare of the team and then the welfare of the others the project manager has to have a maturity which would come with the experience and there should not be any kind of biased approach there should be impartial approach and also it is uh, to be honest and to be uh, to be uh, genuine uh, project manager the task is going to be very very difficult to maintain the same pace at all the time this is the human aspect of the project manager project management by the project manager see you all in the next video on the administrative aspect of the project management thank you everyone